It's a new week in the NFL season, guys. I think we're like almost two months halfway through the season. I don't like to say it, but we're there. Um, this is kind of it's a rivalry week, but it's like a friendly rivalry week because you know what? Throughout this process of doing 256 episodes of this podcast, I've made many friends from many teams. And this is one of them making his return for the first time in a long time, the voice of Bill's Mafia, Joe Miller. But before we talk about the football, the I want voice to talk and the s- face, the voice the and the face, the voice and the face. Yes, sir. I think we got a podcast title right there. <laughs> um, but one thing I want to talk about is all the fights we've been seeing at games lately. And I'm just here to basically not condone it, but just like talk, push against it because I like I like going to football games, but at the same time too, like I don't want to go to a football game and like like for example, I live ninety minutes from Orchard Park, 90, mm-hmm. 90 to about a one twenty, mm-hmm. and like I don't want to go there and like knowing like hey, just because someone looks at you the wrong way or if you look at someone the wrong way, it potentially means that like someone's gonna sock you. Like we've seen it, I think we've seen it a lot more in the NFL this year, and I think it's just a perfect chance to talk about it because obviously you're Buffalo, I'm New England, but like if you and I went to a game, I would never like look to punch someone or i've never been driven from sports to to fight someone like i just want to get your stance on it because i feel like it's an issue that should be brought up more within the nfl circles i don't get it um i yeah. think people first of all need to realize and understand that uh fighting is illegal right mm-hmm. there was a there was a comment about this very thing on twitter uh just about i can't remember exactly how it was brought up like they said they need to make it illegal to body slam people yeah and i was like it's illegal to punch somebody <laughs> Like, what what are we talking about right now? Um, I think for all intents and purposes, I don't like it either. Um, I've, I, I'm in the first row of the upper deck in at the Ralph in uh, Highmark Stadium. And I can be honest with you, I've heard the crowd behind me, like, rustle up, to which I've turned around and seen grown men rolling down the stairs in the upper deck as they're fighting each other. Um, uh, I wouldn't for a long time go to a Bills game if the if the Bills were hosting the Raiders. Because Raiders fans, even if they're from outside of Rochester, New York, and have never set head, never set foot in Oakland in their whole entire life, when they got to the stadium in their Raiders t-shirt or their Raiders jersey, felt like they had to be Raider Nation and fight every Bills fan they could find. So, like, literally, I got to the point where I was like, I'm just, if the Raiders are coming to Buffalo, I'm not going to that game anymore. It's different now that they're in Vegas. Uh, Jets fans, Jets fans are horrible. Like Jets fans, for some reason, want to fight all the freaking time. So I think by and large, the most fights I see every single year in a state in in our stadium are, are when the Jets are in town. Um, but, but it's, there's no place for it. I don't get it either. And, and like now there's like women fighting each other, which is totally bizarre to me. Um, because it's like, I couldn't see my wife throwing a punch. I mean, I could see mine because mine, like, she doesn't take any crap. My soon to be wife, excuse me. Like, I, I say this lovingly and respectfully. I love the woman to death, crap. but like, she she does not. She is one tough woman. But I like that's the thing I look at too, where I'm just like, like I go to Buffalo often for Sabres games. Never once have I had a problem. I've gone like I've gone and supported the Sabres. I've gone and supported the away team. The worst I've got maybe is the Jersey Bird salute or someone just like yes. yell. You get like a happy chat, chat yes. chirp or whatever yes. at, at the key bank. But at Ralph or even the new stadium, which who knows what the name's going to be for it, besides people getting high and falling into it, um, is just the fact that like that there's a safety element to going to a football game. Because like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we invest emotionally. We invest our time stress levels all that get involved but at the end of the day i'm not going to go and punch someone just because oh say the pats lose or say if we're in buffalo and someone looks at me that's where if you go like if i want to like i thought about going to the game on new year's this year one large part one because i thought at the time hey maybe we're in the hunt and it's a meaningful game not anymore because obviously Jeez. whoopsies yes. <laughs> whoopsies it was bound to happen but two like i don't want to go and like do it because the one time i went was with my family and we didn't know what it was like like yeah. it was like there so then it's just yeah. there's an element of safety where i'm like i don't have to go to a game and worry about my safety i'll probably I'll, i'm gonna say this, i'll probably wait for the new stadium to open up before i go to a game again down really there. yeah well it's only a few years in buffalo yeah it's always like, weird would... to me when people tell me they've had a bad experience with bills fans because by and large i have never i mean is there chirping as far as like on the way out of the stadium? Sure. But that chirping goes in the opposite direction too. When we get beat by whoever the opponent is and they chirp at us. Um, but I, I just don't find, I, I just have never really found it difficult. The closest I've ever been to getting into a fight at a football game. Um, and this is me being honest was 
two years ago. It was two years ago. It was the 13 seconds game. So it was the Bills Ooh. and the Chiefs in the playoffs in Kansas City. Yes. Uh, I was at that game with my daughter, McKenna, who at the time was 14 years old. Um, it was halftime, and mm -hmm. we went out to go to the bathroom, use the facilities, and get maybe another water or beer or whatever. And she, I, I waited for her as she went to the bathroom, and then we walked over to the men's side, and I went in. And when I came out, there was a drunk Chiefs fan kind of like in front of her trying to pick her up. And I walked over, and I was like, you're making life decisions right now, sir. <laughs> like, you, that's your dad telling you it's about to be – bad for you <laughs> and he yeah, was like oh cause... sorry man <laughs> like he immediately exited <laughs> stage left it was over like it there, was, there wasn't a fight but i i made it very clear that dad is not down with this so as a game of fuck around and find out that he did not yes, want to play <laughs> exactly you were making life decisions right now sir so, but yeah. no but through this and stuff like podcasting like yeah i've made friends with bills guys like yourself mm -hmm. like the boys at cover one like i've done a bunch like, yeah super good stuff. dudes yeah yeah like greg and yeah. chris kepner all those guys oh, great yeah. dudes yeah. it's just like the, the one experience i had with my family just because it was the it was the one game that you guys won it was like the 2011 i think it was like week three. Oh, the uh so that would be the uh drayton florence game yes that's the yes. game and we didn't know what to expect but then it was funny so like Brady threw a pick and like some guy basically came like ran down the stairs and like shouted right in my face, just like sit down and everything like that. And then someone else threw like beer at us and stuff. But luckily we actually, it was funny. Marcel Darius is like, I think his cousins or his uncles were like three or four rows behind us and basically like kind of had our back. So it's just a little, oh. cool little story yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. But then also too, like that's the other thing with the, like the bills Patriots. I feel like the last few years, whenever the Pats have gone there, it's always been in December. And like, if oh. I were to go to a game, I'd rather go like, if, 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 like, it was when the game against Miami this year was, probably would have been more likely because I know when you go to Buffalo at that time of the year, weather's perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I can, I can tell you, if you do wait for the new stadium to open, I've been at uh, Totten, Totten, Tottenham uh -huh. Hotspur Stadium, and uh, our stadium is going to be designed closely to that. And the mm. inside of it looks very similar. It's gorgeous. Like, it's on, like not a bad seat in the house. It's literally... And I've been in Lucas Oil. I've been in a bunch of new stadiums. Like, it's beautiful. I've been in Ford Field. Like, there's a bunch of new stadiums I've been in. It's absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful stadium. It's gonna be I, was at, I was at Ford Field this summer, actually. It was for uh, WWE, but I did get a feel for it. It's it's a cool stadium. I feel like for the outside, it's not much, that doesn't much to the eye. But the inside, they do a really good job with it. If we The one game that I went to see the Bills play, um, no, that's not true. I've seen the Bills play there twice. The not first time that – what's that? Not Thanksgiving last year? No, 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 no. My my wife would not have that. Um, oh. No, it was uh, uh, so it was the it was a it was the Rex Ryan uh, snow game where they moved the game to Detroit. Uh, it's November uh, what twenty seventeen or twenty sixteen, whenever that happened. Um, and but then there was a game before that, and we stayed at uh, whatever the uh, Motor City Hotel and Casino is there. It's only like a mile away. Um, we go down to the front desk, and I asked the guy something like, "Which way to the stadium?" He's like, "Are you planning on walking?" And we were like yeah it's only a mile he's like you don't want to do that let me call you a cab i'm like no dude it's really it's good he's like no really you don't want to do that i'll call you a cab <laughs> i was like all right i guess we're taking a cab i mean i did walk to ford field this summer when i was there it's gotten it the, the city of detroit's really gotten better and oh good that's one thing we'll talk about too because the football team as a whole is better the city's gotten better but it's all good and fun but with with football this year, I mean, this is the first week of the bye week blues. So for all you fantasy footballers out there, it's kind of tough sledding. And then quickly before if we just run into, into it tomorrow night, obviously, if you listen to this on Thursday, tonight's game, New Orleans and Jacksonville. You saw Jacksonville a couple weeks ago. Um, but I'm going to say this right here. I think this is a not a get right game, but I think this is a, kind of the game where New Orleans kind of gets that like upper hand after the bad loss last week because they're such a fluctuant team. How like they beat the shit out of the Patriots, but then yeah, CJ Stroud yeah. has their way with them. Yeah, I don't I don't buy into the Jaguars to begin with. Even with the Jaguars beating the Bills, I mean, there's some matchups in certain teams that just beat other teams. Like even even when the the Patriots were the most dominant team possible, the Dolphins always seem to have their number, mm -hmm. no matter how bad they were or how crappy the quarterback was. The Patriots just had a hard time with the Dolphins. The Bills, the last time they kind of – not last time, but one of the last times they really laid an egg was against the Jaguars. For some reason, that matchup just doesn't really work well. 
And th- there's all the storylines that go into that game in London, the, the travel when the Bills left and yada, yada, yada. You could, anybody that has watched the Bills for 25 minutes can tell or could tell that, like, they're off. Like, there's something – like, when you go three quarters and you don't score a point, if you're the Buffalo Bills, there's a problem, right? It's like yeah. something just ain't right. I don't buy into the Jags, so I like that take. I think I, – I agree, and I've always kind of been a Derek Carr fan, which is odd. I love Chris Olave, you know, and, and there's, there's, there's a lot of good players on that football team for sure, so I like that take. It, it, it's just, too, with the Saints as well. Like I said, there's just, like, the up and down. They have a lot of injury concerns, but mm-hmm. with Jacksonville, too, I think they need that, like – humbling experience because obviously they lost to Houston at home which I sniffed out perfectly the plus eight like I sniffed out I like right away when Buffalo came out as plus uh, the minus five and a half right mm-hmm. away I was like Jack Jacksonville's got I'm like no offense to you I just knew right away well, I'm like the numbers is just one of those like Vegas traps and there's another game here later I want to talk about that's like that but with this yeah. game I just feel like it's that like backseat game where Jacksonville kind of has to like be like okay hey We've won three in a row. We mm-hmm. won. We won in the Toy Story universe. We beat the Bills in London. We played the Colts last week and beat them. But mm-hmm. now on a short week, it's kind of like, hey, reel it in, guys. Like to where, right? And I'll say this: the AFC South's been a surprising division this year. You have four teams that are been quite competitive. Yes, agreed. Uh, between yes, I would hundred. Although Anthony Richardson being out for the season was mm-hmm. a little bit of a shock when that news came out today. But um, but yes, to your point, it's it's been surprising to see the the Jaguars the way that they are, the Texans that would CJ Stroud, um, being as good as they are. And the question is, is how long is that going to last? Right? I, it, it's the Jags division. Anyway, you, any way you l- like lace it up, that that division belongs to the Jags. I just am not a believer in Trevor Lawrence. Are you? Um, I'm a believer that he can be their guy, but I don't know if he can be the guy, you know, well said. like he's well said. like, he's a star. He's their starter, but I don't know if he's going to take him to the promised land. Right. Yeah. Right. That, that's how I view it. But yeah. then moving on to Indy and Cleveland, I'm going to say this right here too. I know like the Anthony Richardson thing. I'm sorry, but Jim Irsay is one of the weirdest owners in the NFL. Like how he tweeted it that he's missing the season. It's just like, like, I, he had such promise, which all says to Shane Steichen's doing a phenomenal job coaching this. Because my take at the beginning of the season with the Colts was, it, by two years from now, they're either going to be the Eagles, not in the sense of making the Super Bowl, just like where, you know, hey, they know Jalen Hurts is their guy. Right. Or it's going to be the Fields thing with Chicago where it's just like a hot steaming pile of crap. Um, but I, with- I have not been a believer in Fields since the day that he came out. I literally, I, I, I lived in Columbus for 13 years, and I'm not a Buckeye fan necessarily, but I, I watch a lot of Buckeye football still today. And I was like, I don't get it. And people on Twitter are like, oh, the, the Fields is going to be great. I'm like, I'm, I don't get it. And here we are. So, <laughs> like, like I mean, too, with that, it's just he had so much talent around him. Like he yeah. had, like that's the thing with Ohio State quarterbacks. Alabama's kind of the same. We'll get into that in a little yeah. bit, but it's kind of the same sort of thing, like where the talent around them just propels them and makes them out much better like we see in san francisco but with this game i'm gonna say this i i know they lost him for the year i still like the colts in this game just because i think cleveland has that like the same thing with cleveland they have that comeback to earth you know last Mm. week huge Mm. win over san fran everyone thinks that they're gonna go in take care of business defense is elite bro that That's defense is it. elite, but I like your take about Jim Irsay, and I'm going to sound super hypocritical as I'm sitting here sipping tequila. Jim <laughs> Irsay is a complete alcoholic. I mean, it's oh, like, it. but but even aside from that, I, I when when whatever that ha- when whatever happened, it was it was several years ago when there was the tornado and the staging fell and killed some people. Um, I don't know. And it was like, and then like the report from the Colts was like, oh, Jim Mercer is going to donate like a hundred thousand dollars to the families or the victims of yada, yada, yada. I was like a billionaire donating a hundred thousand dollars. Like here's a nickel kid. <laughs> you know what I mean, like really a hundred thousand dollars. That's all you can choke up. Sorry. So yeah, <laughs> but like, and even too, he had the arrest a few years ago where he had like all those like pill bottles yes, and Percocets yes. and this thing. That dude is, that dude's a train wreck big yeah. time. Like the horns are blowing. Like, oh, uh, yeah. That dude's a train wreck. yeah. Um, as it comes for this game, I just – there's just something – and also, dude, it has to do with the fact that in, it's kind of that, like, reverse psychology. Like, you know, hey, Indianapolis lost bad last weekend. Cleveland mm-hmm. did that. I'm not knocking it. I, if I if I were to bet a, an over-under total, a lot of games this week I think are just going to be boring under affairs. So that's just that's that. Just was that was this past weekend. I think you're, I think you're a, week, a, a week behind, bro. Well, it's going to – no, I think it's going to happen again this week. Like, the highest total, I think, is Miami and Philly at 52. Besides that, most games are 40, or there's a lot of games between 37. So you've, got the, you've got the NFL following the stock market for some reason is what you're telling me. I, that's, I think that's what the script is trying to tell us this year, where it's just like Maybe. these wonky totals because – 
Like, I don't know, Cleve, like, Cleveland's such a weird team to me as well, where it's this make-or-break year for Stefanski because Cleveland this year is what Denver was last year in the sense mm -hmm. of if it doesn't work out with the thing, coach is gone. Like, if they miss the mm -hmm. playoffs, Stefanski's fired. Then you bring in the guy for Watson, which, but the only thing is, though, unlike Denver, Cleveland's not getting out of the contract. There's no way I think Cleveland yeah, gets no, out of that contract. It's guaranteed. It's 100% guaranteed. They can't get out of it. Yeah, and the cap hit's also disgusting. I know the cap, like, that's the one thing Greg Thompson's taught me is that the cap is credit card spending, but yeah. that one's just, no, they maxed out their cards for him. Well, if um, it's guaranteed, if it's guaranteed, that I don't think they, they can get out of it. I think even yeah. the, if they cut him, I think he gets the money. If he if he ends up with a career-ending injury, I think he gets the money. I mean, there might be an injury settlement in there, but it's a guaranteed, fully guaranteed, which is what Lamar wanted. And it's like, mm -hmm. the Browns had no business giving a sexual offender a fully guaranteed contract, let alone that sexual offender as much as people were on the Deshaun Watson bandwagon when he was a Texan, he was good, but he wasn't Pat Mahomes. He wasn't nope. guaranteed $220, 25000000 million good, right? I mean, I don't care how desperate you are. If he didn't even have that baggage with him, for me, there's an aspect of like, really? Like that you're going to give him that much money? Guaranteed? I think it's just Cleveland desperate for their guy. It's like you there have a lot of teams like this. One of them's on by this week in Carolina, which I'll I'll talk about in a bit, but bust. I, I, Great show. Yeah. Bust. Um I also have actually let's talk about this now before because uh next I believe <laughs> you know what? Because I next you I reeled you in just like a fish. I was like hey, you reeled me in like a fish because next is our game. <laughs> and I'm gonna say this because their owner, I think, so badly wants to be what Robert Kraft's been for the last 20 years. I know it's a weird example, but you know how like a lot of people view Kraft as like Hey, he bought the team, then he got his guy, and yeah. then they went on this magical 20-year six Super Bowl run. I feel like a lot of these business owner business guys that own the team, like David Tepper, it's like the same sort of thing, except for Tepper. Apparently, him and Reich talk on the phone multiple times a week or even talk in person mm -hmm. to where you gotta let the football men do the football things and just Tepper, like, see, like, like with Kraft, you never see, like obviously sometimes you may get involved with football stuff. There's the book, The Dynasty, I could talk about forever. But with Tepper, just sit back and smooth the celebrities that are in your box. Like how you see, hey, Bon Jovi, Mark Wahlberg, all these guys with Kraft. Yeah, you never see. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, so, I would, I would, I would tell you that um, uh, Frank Reich did talk about this. That he has yes. a, a meeting with him, and it's not a fun meeting, which I can respect. Um, yeah, uh, Robert Kraft is about to get really involved in the football operations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, it's about to get really involved. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's an uh, it's an ugly avenue. And before we talk about our game, I'll say this right now is on, on the record, fans. Everyone's just like in this whole thing of, oh, would I rather? Because obviously, look, New England's in per quarterback purgatory right now, mm. where basically everyone's like, oh, why won't they bench Matt? Because I'm like, the only other option really is Bailey Zappi, which Malik Cunningham, I think, will get a sniff eventually. But with Mac, I just think that it's. Basically, you know, I'm, there's two metaphors I was going to use for this. One, it's either like when you get your phone destroyed and you have to dunk it in the rice, but then the rice just ain't doing shit. Or the car is damaged beyond repair to where you can't drive it anymore, to where if you drive it, it's just going to flame can we, out. Can we back up to Mac Jones being the dirtiest player in football first? Admit it. Just say it. The dude kicked a guy in the nuts as he was trying to slide. He kicked. Let's see. There was the he Brian punched Burns the guy, and then he punched the guy in the nuts this year. Yeah, it's like Grayson Allen from Duke. Almost, I think it's just like you know that like he, he it, is a spoiled little brat. I was going to go more the, at that on the, angle on the playground. Takes the cheap shot because things aren't going his way. It's basically. Do you remember the like? As I know, you're obviously older than me, but you know the prank back in the day a where older, someone a lot older than you. Well, I know a lot older than me. <laughs> you're almost fifty. I'm going to be thirty in like. I two am months. fifty. Oh, you're our 50. He's 50. Five zero. Almost, you're five zero. I'm almost three zero. You know, basically, when you have the chair and then you pull the chair out from someone and their ass mm -hmm. just goes smack, he's That's the kind of kid that would do that. Like, and laugh. Smack. And laugh. Yeah. Yeah. And laugh. I was guilty of that too, but I did that in like the fifth grade. Um, <laughs> but great. with our situation, it's just like part of me thinks, like, because everyone's talking about, like, oh, the draft this year, there's so many quarterbacks. Like, I'll say this right now I don't buy the Drake May hype. I don't. Mm, I don't. I don't know. I honestly would rather go out there and try to get someone that's going to like more of a vet that's kind of a proven commodity, especially that's more if they keep Belichick. I think if you do, if this is his final, which I know everyone says the whole thing, like Tom Landry went out three and 13. It's well, looking like Belichick may go out. I don't know. Well, 
there's i mean you're 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 lobbing me softballs that have a lot of meat on the bone Ooh. um i mean there's an aspect of like what do you feel about caleb williams and the, and the comments that he made about wanting ownership in the team that he I don't like that. To go, right it's, I don't it, like it's that. not gonna happen like no, no no i don't even know that it's it's inside of the inside of the the contracts or whatever the agreement the uh what what the board of governors or the players the board of governors whatever whatever the whatever the the current binding agreement is for CBA. the players union right the CBA like I don't think he can even ask for that I don't think he can get it regardless of that I don't know that there's a a secondary quarterback out there for the the Patriots to go get but to your greater point Bill Belichick is proving <clears throat> that Mike Tomlin is ten times the coach that he's ever been in my opinion. It's it's also wild too with the Steelers that they've had three coaches in a fifth basically your lifetime. There's only been three men to coach that organization. A hundred percent. But he is also, I mean, yeah. he he has turned chicken salad out of chicken shit yep. his whole entire career. He's never had a season less than five hundred. And and Bill Belichick has has he had a winning season without Tom Brady? 2021, but then obviously you guys cooked us in the playoffs. So like last year was all like it was like eight and nine, so it was just under 2020 is always like a write off year. But even because I was like my- Rex Ryan has come out and said this team sucks. Yeah, this this I team mean, it's just the the injuries didn't help because it was the defense was right, good enough. Right. Mm-hmm. But now it's just a matter of like I don't know like I don't know what to believe. It's just that's why when I say with the draft, like there's so many quarterbacks out there, but I don't mm-hmm. want to do this like what we see the Jets do where it's just yeah. this rinse and repeat cycle of like, well, that's hey, what the Bills did for 20 years. <clears throat> exactly right? what you guys yeah. did for 20 years where it's just trying to draft the next big thing. And then obviously look, Bean and McDermott, they saw something, this kid from Wyoming who now has the hearts of everyone in the 716 and in the mafia, because mm-hmm. I know the mafia community is worldwide, but with New England, I'd rather go out there and like, trade. There's a few guys in mind that like, I'd rather go trade for like one being like, well, not trade, but, like, I know this is going to sound lame, but, like, Kirk Cousins, you know, free agent at the end of the year, like, that kind of – and because the Pats do have cap to spend. That's the thing. You, they, you, can, win with, you can win with Kirk Cousins. Exactly. Like a, team can, a team can win with Kirk Cousins. And then there's there's two potential trade candidates or one that could be a cap cut that – one, I think, is realistic, which is Kyler Murray because he's there's no way in hell he's in Arizona next year. I would – I would, dude, I would avoid that like the plague. I would avoid it. I'm just throwing names out. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Also, I because I do think he is getting traded, but his cap, dead cap next year is eighty one million dollars for the Cardinals. The other that's prohibitive. This, yeah. <laughs> but the but the Cardinals, I think, are the, the, the Cardinals have kind of proven that, like, hey, I think Jonathan Gannon's bought some years, but then when they get good, he's the guy that they're gonna kick to the curb. Yeah, um, yeah. the other guy that I had in mind where it's like, hey, this could happen, call me crazy. That Dak Prescott. I know it sounds really. I weird, like but Dak Prescott. Mm, I, I like him. I, I I say that for a few reasons. One, because look, he wants more money. But two, Dallas is at the end of the season. There is a defensive edge who's going to go to Jerry Jones and say, "I want thirty million dollars. I want w- more yeah. than what Nick Bosa's making." Mike, and Micah Parsons deserves yeah. it. And he deserves it. I was saying that for two weeks. He should be in the MVP conversation. Yeah, he should be in the MVP. He's unstoppable. Like, people are just, like, the, the funny part is there's, there's several of those guys, but Micah is at the top of the list. Yeah, and then, like, we saw what Nick Bosa got, so he can easily go, hey, I deserve more than Bosa because I think he will be deep boy at the end of the year. Oh, yeah. Um, and well, then if also- Daniel Jones is getting more than Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen, then then Micah Parsons is going to get more than Bosa. <laughs> that, is, that, is such a, that is such a bad contract. Oh, my God. Like, Giants fans still think, like, even like Giants fans, like I have to come to me say Max bad, but like they even say it's like, oh, but like Daniel, it's always with Giants fans, it's always another excuse of oh, yeah. like, oh, the line did this, or even the Devin Witherspoon pick six from a few weeks ago was, oh, Paris Campbell wasn't like the wrong place. No, it's just right, Daniel Jones right. is just lobbing things up. I, I say Dak Prescott because also CD Lamb's gonna want money at the end of the year, and Jerry's always wanted. I don't. I could see. I because he know you know he's gonna want more than twenty. Yeah. Him. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So when it comes down to reality, I just, those are like, that's what I'd rather do. I'd rather go after someone who's already have that proven experience. that's on their way out. Like, so those are the, re- the bigger question you need to ask yourself. Patriot nation Ooh. guy is who yes. is going to be the head coach of the Patriots next year. Is it going to be Gerard Mayo? I think so. I think because remember oh, Carolina, I know, but Carolina wanted to interview him and I think it's kind of like one of those promised things, unless there's someone else that came in here. 
I don't buy like like Colin Coward. I don't know if you saw it today, but he was saying mm-hmm. Brian uh, Ben Johnson, OC in Detroit, he could come in and fix this. Which I'm just like, no, Ben Johnson needs to go to a team where, or is it Ben or Brian? I know there's a ones in Philly and not, ones in Detroit. I'm not worrying about that. I'm wondering how could you fix this? Oh, it's not it's not a quick fix. No, 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 no. This isn't you, a quick you, fix. You, you, they can't block. No. They can't pass block. They don't have a quarterback. And Ramondre Stevenson is a freaking monster. But that's pretty much it. They basically have a wide receiver core that's pretty much mid and unaccountable. Like the Devont- the Devontae Parker comments from Sunday pissed me off beyond, beyond belief. Where I didn't see them. Basically, he took. He, basically, if you go back and watch his um, catch from Sunday, he just had it on his. Like he basically had the ball and then he dropped it. And he basically said he's like he tried to basically blame it on the throw more than him because it was a perfectly catchable ball. Mm. Um, the tight end game is just. Look, I don't know what to think. Hunter, like Hunter Henry and Gasicki are good for what they are, but they're not blockers at all. Like Gasicki mm-hmm. got cooked. Um, I'll say well, that Gasicki is not a run, a blocker Dude. at all. Dude. At all, he wasn't in Miami. He was just no. a really tall wide receiver. They tried using Hunter Henry as a blocker last year, and every time he did it, he was on his ass. So it's just not proven. Those guys are pass catching tight ends, and not blocking tight ends. Right. right um, right. the offensive line. Uh, yeah, I'll straight up tell you, it's trash. Our offensive line is terrible like that's, it's, why he's, that's why mac jones is leading the league in what is it uh time to throw right he's got the lowest number time to throw yeah i think it's like 1.8 or something like that it's it's it's, it's terrible so that's the thing too because like and even this year we drafted three offensive linemen but they're not ready and even to it's like that whole two years away from being two years away thing david andrews is past his prime to like where you can kind of tell like time to pasture like he's probably going to retire soon and then trent brown i think is gone so it's just this question. That's the biggest question, too, because it's like it's not just I, I'm like when I say bring in a veteran quarterback, it's on, hey, just plug and play and fix. But it's just like, hey, yeah. if you bring in, a, I just think bringing in a vet, even with the new coach, is the better route to go than because I even know Kraft, I think, is going to get more involved in what what goes on. I just don't see a world where they are what the Arizona Cardinals are this year. I just don't think they'll be that. I think it's that you know, strive for purgatory and maybe trip and fall into the playoffs, which sucks. But that's that that's yeah. just how I that's that's what I think is gonna happen. I think the more and more the season goes on, they'll do that. But I'll say this still right now, if they get waxed on Sunday, which like I said, I think this this is a perfect like for as much as I'd love to beat Buffalo, this screams get right for the Bills. Josh Allen loves to play in Gillette. I think Stephon Diggs anytime touchdown is a free money bet. Yeah, Another one, I will say. G- Stephon Diggs against JC Jackson is a free money bet. Yeah, because even last, it's like yeah, because even in 2021, I remember the the one game it was Boxing Day, day after Christmas. Damian Harris, who for, fortunately is doing better for you guys, I know uh, he was released from hospital just in the next sprain. Yep, 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 yep. Um, but the other side to it is Diggs and Allen always cook in Gillette Stadium. I don't oh, know yeah. what it is. I, it goes back to the 2020 game when you guys had everything wrapped up and we were just trying yep. to get to the get to the off season that game won a lot of people fantasy football he included <laughs> yeah that game i think it was like 38 to 7 or something like that you know you know the one i'm talking about monday night football. Me included he said yep i know yep yeah mm, and 100%. then 2021 same thing where it was it was close but then you guys just the game in 2021 was like the game last year last regular season game of the year where it was like it felt close but it was never close yep, and then 2022 yep. there was that weird gabe davis touchdown which Josh mm-hmm. Allen kind of threw it on a curve, and I think Gabe barely got his feet. Oh, that was where he was running, running, running to the sideline, right? Yes. <clears throat> yes, yeah. Gabe yeah. was running to the sideline. So Josh does that a lot. He did it this past weekend to Quentin Morris. Like, he literally was rolling out to his right, and if and there's an end zone shot in that Giants game where Quentin Morris comes towards the camera, turns around, the defender's right on him. Josh, then you see Josh kind of hit the film as Quentin Morris breaks away and runs back towards the camera, towards the end zone, and then Josh just releases the ball Quentin Morris turns around and the ball is right there. Like Josh does that a lot. Like yeah. <laughs> to the point where it's like, how does he know that somebody's not coming across the field the other direction and just like whoosh, take it away from him? But yeah, it's exactly pretty- that's that's the one thing with your game Sunday. I know that like the Bills didn't have their best game, but the two touchdown routes by Hardy and Morris were very well executed routes that the very Bills did well run. executed. Yeah, there's there's I'll, I'll give you I'll give you some hope, some glimmer of hope. And mm-hmm. there's there's an inconsistency to this football team. That has not existed since 2020. When 2020, the COVID year happened, when Josh Allen kind of elevated to the upper echelon of quarterbacks, they were just consistent and good yeah. all the freaking time. And right now, there's just a level of 
you know, I've said it on, on many shows, including my own, uh, from 2020 up until this year, actually more like weeks 14 through the end of last year, if the Buffalo Bills were in third and 12, third and eight, third and 17, third and 22, and Josh Allen drops back to pass and he's about to release the football, I know in my head there's an open receiver on the other end of that pass. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. And now there's an aspect of if it's third and seven, before they even line up, I'm like, I'm not so sure. There's just a weird inconsistency right now. And it's I, I'm not sure if it's because of Josh not trusting his weapons outside of Stefan Diggs. I'm not sure if it's because they're asking Josh to be a game manager and not be Superman, or if it's just a situation of they're just not really preparing. Josh Allen said in his press conference today, you go through two games like the last two we had against the Jaguars, Jaguars where you lose, and then the Giants where you can't execute. Both games through three quarters couldn't score a point. And it makes you refocus and start to pay attention to the details. You know what Tom Brady never had to do? Pay attention to the details. Nope. He had them down every single week. And there's an aspect of like, you need to be consistent if you're going to be a winning football team. So I don't, coming off that Dolphins game, I don't want to say that it was their Super Bowl, but there was very much a, we almost put a 50 burger on the Dolphins who scored 70 points last week. We got this thing in the bag. And then the Jaguars yeah. with the trip beat them. The Giants almost beat them. It comes down to the last play. And now all of a sudden it's like, yeah, we probably need to pay attention to the details. Well, what? it's kind of, it's like the kid who I was like, Hey, I'm not going to study for my final exam. I'm fine. And then you get in there and you're like, Oh shit, what do I do? Like, I don't know. Any exactly. Of this. Yeah. Exactly. Um, like the one, like I know the one question I always have is, is, is McDermott's job on the line just because of like Buffalo no. has the higher expect? I don't, no. I don't think that anymore, especially I know this summer him and Bean signed extensions. Outside of him and Bean signing extensions, there's also been some issues in the front office. So Kim Bagula had a stroke, um, yes. and, and, and was removed. And my understanding is she's never going to return, uh, to who she was beforehand, which is really, really disheartening and sad for not only their family, which is tragic, but also for the Bills community because she's, I think, 18 or 20 years younger than Terry Pagula. So yes. Terry's in his 70s. She, he passes away. Kim was pretty much the acting president to begin with. You know, she's got a ton of life in front of her. And like this trajectory, 36 years, we're going to be tied into the stadium. Kim Pagula is the, the, the owner of the team, yada, yada, yada. So all that's gone. They hire Ron Rakuya, who I have good information about people that know him. He's a snake, a weasel, only about Ron Rakuya. They fire him. Good gone and then they hire this new guy who then they just recently fired because he was in bed with his employee mm -hmm. um, right so there's an aspect of like i don't know that anything is going to happen with the football operation side of it when you're talking about being a mcdermott just because there's some turmoil above them Does that make I feel, sense? yeah it makes sense where there's like there's more going on above them i just yeah. feel like with those like, two let's as well. not rock the boat let's not tip the boat over <laughs> i feel like it's like with those two it's like you get along i get along let's keep doing this it's like it's like us podcasting it's like hey I like you. I assume you like me. That's why I keep coming yeah. on. So yeah. we'll keep doing this. Um, yeah. My only thing is more or less is would they potentially change Dorsey this year? If like, or is that more, does that come down to like a Josh decision? Uh, that question is going to be answered. I mean, they're, they're going to have to figure this out. And there's, I, I, there's a, there's a weird feeling. I don't know what the feeling is. And Josh Allen in his press conference today, and I don't expect you to watch Josh Allen's press conferences, but somebody asked him one of the bills B, B guys asked him about the comments criticism that the bills offense is getting and josh did not get snarky but it was very underhanded in much as much as he said you know there's a lot of like you know at home offensive coordinators out there that don't know anything about the play call don't know the blocking schemes don't know what we're trying to do don't know what we're trying to execute which was very not veiled and strange. It wasn't snarky in the sense of the way that he said it, but it was very, you could read into it that like for a guy that says, I don't read social media. It's like, Oh, you're all up in this. Like, you yeah. know that me and all of us guys that are doing this are talking about how the offense looks like shit. Um, so the question is, is why does it look like shit? Does it look like shit because we're trying to make Josh Allen be something he's not, or is, is does it look like shit because the scheme is bad does it look like shit because they're asking Josh Allen to do stuff he doesn't necessarily do well? Like, is it the talent around him? Does he not trust anyone outside of Stefan Diggs? There's something going on here. I don't know what the something is, but it's gonna we're gonna find out this year. Yeah, and and also too, like 
Like I know there's those whole rumors about like Diggs leaving, and I just feel like even. those. Are, no. Stephon Diggs loves Buffalo. He's never he he sat at the podium last year or two years ago and was like, "This gives me an opportunity to retire a Buffalo Bill, and I can't be more excited than anything than that." This dude, it, 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 oh my gosh, I'm so sick of this narrative. Why is it that that wide receivers from other teams? can do what they're doing and be negative, and it's not a big deal. But Stephon Diggs wants out of Buffalo. Stephon Diggs does not want out of Buffalo. If anything, the, from everything I've heard, from everything I've seen, and everything I, I can surmise, Stephon Diggs walked into Sh Sean McDermott's office. He showed up for, for OTAs, or for minicamp, rather, re, uh, mandatory minicamp, and basically was like, I'm here. I've passed my physical. What I want to know from you is what's going to be different this year. And I don't think Sean McDermott liked that question. And no. it turned into a big giant fight, and, and it got to the point where Sean McDermott said, "You know what? Why don't we just go? Like, let's leave this room, go our separate ways today. We'll reconvene tomorrow." And then Sean McDermott effed up majorly when he said, "I'm very concerned that, that Stefan Diggs isn't here," which he should have never said. But for some reason, there's this narrative carrying. Meanwhile, there's all these other wide receivers in the NFL, Jamar Chase to be one of them, who's like blowing up his quarterback, and Stefan Diggs is up there. There's videos of him going, hey, hey, let's go. But like in like playing with the fan, like Josh, like Josh and Stefan are great as far as that goes. I'm, I don't get where, why is this, why is this wick still burning? I, I, I just feel like it's because, and look, I know mm -hmm. that some people still view Buffalo as a second rate city. I, I go there often. I don't like best chicken wings. You got me on them. Best bar ever. <laughs> I, I've been to East Aurora. I've had the wigs. They are delicious. Homemade Buffalo, blue cheese make, makes it. Buffalo bomb. is an interesting place, and we're yes. not ever going to say that we're Atlanta, Georgia. So no. I, I don't. I don't know what people want from us, but is is it a football town? Yes. Is it the smallest market in the NFL? No, not by a long shot. Um, and I, I there's. The, it is what it is, but keep going. Sorry. Exactly. That's the thing. It is what it is to where I know Toronto's this is 95, 90 minutes from us or 90 yeah. miles from us. There's 5 million people in Toronto. Most mm -hmm. of them are Bills fans. Like, I don't know what this whole, like, Buffalo is too small of a market and can't hold a football team. Freaking Rochester is an hour, hour and a half away, and there's a million people in Monroe County. Like, they're all Bills fans. Like, what? Like, we have one of the biggest fan bases there is. We're the 13th largest MST, MS, MSA in north america the 13th if you draw 100 mile i think it's 100 mile or 150 mile radius around the city we're the 13th largest msa in north america buffalo is not a small market it's a blue collar city where people like you work a monday to friday and all you want to do on sunday is root for your bills that's all very, that buffalo very is very much very much true and Monroe. with a bunch of a bunch of shitty politicians that are all on the take and can't get out of their own way and make anything happen yes 100% Oh, believe me, ever since we switched cable providers, we get all the Buffalo channels, so I see all the weird, like, political ads now. <laughs> so I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. Um, but I think we're both in just an agreement this is get-right game for the Bills. This feels mm -hmm. like that game where it's like, you know, after this, next week you guys have Tampa Bay, we have Miami. Yep, With that yep. Tampa Bay Thursday night game, that just seems like the perfect opportunity, too, to just be like – every because I feel like if you guys win big, like, say if you guys put – Say if it's like another, I don't know, like 38 to 7 kind of game. I feel like everyone's going to be like, oh, but it was the Pats. But then next week you just go in and, and run the floor with Baker Mayfield. I know Tampa looks just, good. It's still just the Bucks. I mean, it's yeah. Baker. I mean, Baker's trash, right? It's the game that's... that actually is the guy that you might end up with. <clears throat> if the Bucks will sign him and do a long term deal, you could end up with Baker. They're, they're, such, they're such a weird team. I don't know what they're going to do. They're, they're, they're weird because I feel like next year for them it's either because look I I feel like him and Mike Evans are probably gone. I know Mike Evans is a lifelong buck, but Mike might not make it through the season. He might end up someplace else. They're saying potentially Buffalo. Ooh, that would not be fun for actually. You know what? It, for me, it doesn't matter. That's more of a Miami fan problem. <laughs> um, the next game I find on here is probably one of the grossest games ever, and that's the Chicago Bears playing the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, what do you think? Look, what do you think of uh, of uh, McDaniel's? Josh McDaniels. You know how in sports there's always those guys that are they're good coordinators, but they're not good coaches. But can we can we can we break down right now just as as a Patriots fan? Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice a little bit. I apologize. <clears throat> Josh McDaniels goes to Denver. Yeah. And players have since come out and said they're he's filming the other team's practices. And like he got fired when it came down on him and he couldn't film other team's practices anymore. And like, then they couldn't win. He got that from one place. He got that from Bill Belichick, who now is having trouble because 
<clears throat> league restrictions, whatever's going on, no Tom Brady, blah, 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 blah. Like, there's yeah. got to be an aspect of, like, we have a shit ton of championships, but we're not it's, so sure that we did this the right way. And Josh McDaniels is a big part of that. Do you right? want to know one guy? I think he never was a Patriots coach, but he's the only person from a Patriots tree to actually be a good head coach. There's one. Mike Vrabel. Think he was about never it. A co- so he's not he was, from the coaching tree. He, he was a former tree. player. But, Brian Dable is from that tree, technically. Brian Dable was on that staff, then went to yes. Alabama, then came to Buffalo, but yes. Yes, so that's my thing, because like, Mike Vrabel is like, you know, like, in the, I meant like Patriots tree, not coaching tree. My yeah, thing yeah. with McDaniels is, is just to, the same thing happened with Patricia, the same thing happened with the Judge, where these guys go to these teams and they think, fuck you, you're going to do what I say, when I say it, yeah. and that's how it's going to yeah. be. Yeah, that's absolutely. literally, I think, what McDaniels is doing in Vegas. Like, even apparently, too. Like, I'm sorry. The way that the Vegas Raiders have been run the last two years, to go out there and trade, mortgage your future to get Devontae Adams because he yeah. wanted to play with his college buddy, who then you basically told to fuck off at the end of last season. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> and now, I think there's a, he's not a Raider next year. I don't think there's a way he's a Raider. Devontae, um, probably not. Probably not. No. That team, like Josh Jacobs even, too, he's not – He's not like what Josh Jacobs was last year. And I'll say this right now. That defense literally is Max Crosby. Max oh, Crosby the, is... Uh, the Bills he, shut him down. The Bills basically removed him from the football game when we played him. Like, I remember you guys that game. It was 7 nothing, and there was that sense of panic. And then you guys found the gas pedal and just, whoo, just took off from over. there. Yeah, yeah it, 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 was, it was definitely over. I think For me, there's an aspect. The most bizarre thing about New England and mm-hmm. Bill Belichick and his coaching tree that does mm-hmm. not exist there is no bill belichick coaching tree no the most bizarre thing is how many guys get hired someplace else and run their asses back to new england when they get fired i've it's the most biz, no it doesn't happen anywhere else and no. has not happened anywhere else and I, I i don't even mean 17 times because it's happened 17 times mm-hmm. it doesn't happen once there isn't a one time where a coach leaves a staff and a head coach to go coach the texans gets fired, and comes back to your staff. It doesn't happen. It's the no. most bizarre thing I've ever seen. I, I Bill O'Brien, even him too, like he's another guy you could look at. Hey, he's a head coaching candidate. I Romeo think Cronell. The, the, yeah. amount, I mean, the list is long and distinguished. Love, it, uh, Pat, like the amount, Patricia, like yeah. Josh McDaniels, like all of them leave, come back. It's so weird. Yeah. Patricia and Judge, though, are the perfect examples of going to another team and trying the Patriot way method out, and you just end up alienating everyone. We saw it with Detroit, because we'll get into it a bit, but with Detroit now, like, there's something there. With New York now, on-field personnel, no, but off-field, like, the personnel away from it, because you can speak on this with what Shane and Dayball have been doing with those two. Like, hey, they're trying to build a mafia method down in East Rutherford in... uh, Buffalo and Buffalo, New Jersey. I mean, East Rutherford, excuse me. But um, with the McDaniels thing, it's just, I don't know. Like, because that's the thing after this year. I And with Belichick, too, I don't think it's a fi- it's it's not a firing. It's going to be a retirement. He'll get his roses. He'll do all that because. There's a he, chance that Josh McDaniels could be your head coach next year. I don't know what. To, I Honestly, it's that like weird. Per, it's that weird. I've been saying Pandora's box of this team since 2020. And now as a whole, it's just Pandora's box. Because we don't know what the personnel are going to be. We don't know what the off-field staff are going to be. It's just this weird, like, unknown. And I'll say this, too, like I was saying with Sunday. If the Patriots end up getting waxed, it's just going to be a talk of, okay, who's on their way out? Because I think it's time to start looking ahead to 2024, getting draft assets for guys like Josh Uche, who is on his expiring rookie deal, who I don't expect to sign in New England after next year because he'll go to a team and he'll be used right, which is to – rush the passer he's not a run defender right Right. um but yeah back to the mcdaniels thing with vegas i just think it's like try to bring your guys in and have them run your system i think that's why they got garoppolo as their quarterback in all honesty is just you know get a guy who knows the patriot way like there's a few other players there too obviously they brought in brian hoyer they brought in adam butler's there there's there's a few other guys but i don't remember but like i said but the that's freaking even, the hubris, yeah. the hubris around it, that somehow yeah. Tom Brady was Tom Brady because he understood the Patriot way. That mofo went to Tampa and mm-hmm. won a Super Bowl in Tampa, and your franchise went into the shitter. Yep. With the Patriot way. So maybe you might might you might want to back up a second and be like, 
maybe it was more Tom Brady than the Patriot way where we were filming people's offenses and designing our defensive schemes around the film we had by what they were going to run this week in Cincinnati yeah. and all the other places we got caught doing it, right? My my biggest what if still is what if 2001 week three – Muhammad Lewis doesn't nearly kill Drew Bledsoe on the field. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know if any of this is here. That's the that's the thing about this because Brady, like, there was always because that's the thing with Tom. There was always signs of this when he was at Michigan. I know this is well before my time when I was yeah. like a toddler. Um, but at Michigan, he would come, like I've gone back and done my homework, but he would come into games and save Michigan's bacon a lot of the times, especially in his senior year, and it was just. Let's take a chance on this kid and like the way fate works sometimes. They did not draft him to take a chance on him. They drafted no, him in the sixth round because they needed a backup quarterback. Yeah, but they their backup room was pretty full. Like when I say take a chance, yeah, I mean, but like because Bill Belichick has lived by the draft a quarterback thing. Yeah. Let's just draft a quarterback. You just draft one, right? Because it's Bill's mafia. We we've talked about it on our radio shows and forever about why don't we just do what the Patriots do and just draft a quarterback every year. Because Bill Belichick does it. Why don't we do it? Because everyone, I feel like everyone try. It's like the same thing, like how I'm saying with the McDaniels side of it, where it's you, tr everyone that tries it out. Like I even go to the Carolina Panthers trying to do it, where it's just there's this obsession to get your guy and then just go. Because I feel like even like with the, like with the Patriot yeah. way method of what, what I'm going back to like 94 when Robert Kraft sure. bought the team. Obviously. Yeah. When I'm a baby and you're uh, seeing 20 years older than me, when you're just in your I was uh, 20, uh, 20 years old in 1994. Yeah. So, yes. So no, it's no, that 20, same. I was 20, 21 in 19, 21, yeah. 21 in 1994. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that same sort of thing now, like where a lot of these owners come in and there's that like sense of business, like, you know, like, hey, we're going to run this like a business, but then that's not how you do it in the, in the NFL. Like, I know, like, for example, in Buffalo, basically when Kim and Terry, yeah, Kim and Terry got there. Excuse me. It was all, hey, let's get the Bills back and healthy. Mm -hmm. Because the Bills is the heartbeat of the city. Meanwhile, you neglected the blue and gold, and they went down into the shitter. They were the shitter before that, bro. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, I know. I know. And now there's, like, the sense with them where, look, they, they, they basically hire – you hire the right people. Like, how they've hired Bean. They hired McDermott because both came from Carolina, well, which – Just drafted the right people. Tate Thompson is pretty good. Rasmussen is pretty good. Tage right? was actually in the trade, by the way. Well, I'm just saying, there's some good. They, they've done. Some, they've, oh. they've, they've done some good stuff with acquiring players. I think. I think. I understand where you're going with this. I think the problem yeah. that I have with, and you keep saying the Patriot way, the mm -hmm. Patriot way, the Patriot way, and you're and you're likening that phrase, the Patriot way, which I've heard ad nauseum, as has the rest of America. And we hate it because we think it's a bunch. We think it's a load of bullshit, um, and and it's it's proving itself right now to be a load of bullshit in the rest of America's eyes. And I apologize. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, no. but the Patriot way is nothing more than Tom Brady basically surprising the shit out of everybody in the Patriot organization and being great. It literally is the same exact thing as the Josh Allen leap. That yep. everybody believes that every quarterback is going to take in year three. And you know what? They're not. Quarterbacks are not taking that Josh Allen leap in 2020. It's not happening. And you know what? Nobody's drafting. Well, that's not true. The 49ers freaking drafted Brock Purdy. And he might be the next Tom Brady. Like, crazy enough, Mr. Irrelevant, this kid is a good freaking football player. They got completely yep. overlooked by everybody. So if there's a Patriot way out there right now, it's in San Francisco. 1,000% I agree with you on that take. I know everyone likes to say, oh, but he's a system quarterback. Oh, he's this. Hey, he may be a system quarterback, but he's oh, doing the job. No, 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 Purdy. Oh, Purdy. Purdy. No, don't. No, Purdy is throwing the – I watched that game where uh, who's, uh, Garoppolo got hurt and Purdy came in. I was actually – it was on the it was on the television. I was I had Sunday ticket. And Miami, I, was watching. I think. Uh, Yeah, and he was throwing uh, – that's why I was watching it. And he was putting the ball in freaking windows that like other professional quarterbacks starters don't throw the ball into. And I'm like, this kid is good. Like this kid can play football. And then sure enough, like he's becoming Brock Purdy, which is unfreaking believable. Yeah. Like you love the good stories like that. Like I know everyone likes to say like him, like the system quarterback thing, but with the basically the Patriot way, more or less is just, you built the right pieces. You got lucky with Tom. And then you have this thing for yeah. 20 years where you have this system of success. Um, I'm gonna, I think with, I'm, I'm gonna commend you for saying getting lucky with Tom because I feel the same way about Josh Allen. The Josh yeah. Allen leap was lucky. It wasn't a situation yeah. of like we drafted him knowing that he was gonna take a Josh Allen leap in 2020. No, they got you lucky. Did. You drafted a kid who was overlooked by every major school, who had to go to JUCO, 
whose only offer was Wyoming, which is not a high FBS program. Wildly raw. What Jamarcus <laughs> Russell was raw, and like a thousand other quarterbacks were raw. He was what they say twenty thousand throws reps behind other quarterbacks at the time, like, like Josh Rosen and Baker Mayfield. Like they got lucky. The Bills got lucky with Josh Allen. Yeah, that's the thing. That that is the exact thing. You know what? It's just fate and destiny for everything. Yep. It happens for a reason. Yep. The only thing I'm going to say, not on the leap, but from what happened there, basically is how I viewed Mac, where I give quarterbacks a three-year window to where if you don't show the signs of being the guy by Agreed. the end of year three, Agreed. that's where basically you kind of you well, cut the cord. You, like you like can, two of last year. On, you can count on three fingers the amount of quarter. Rich Gannon. Like there's <laughs> very few quarterbacks that have ever reached anything after. I mean, the – Who's the, in your opinion, who's the best quarterback in the Bills drought era? 20 years of quarterbacks. Drew Bledsoe's in there. Who's the best quarterback in the drought era? Part of me wants to go Fitz. Nope. I, Cause like, I'm like the other names I'm thinking of is JP Lossman, Kyle Trent. Orton. I, right? I completely that, forgot about that. <laughs> and that's a dude that like literally was, I mean, he was in Denver and he was, if you're a fantasy football guy, he was had, he had 30, a bunch of 30 point weeks, but like there's not many, that list is very short of guys that like, like found success late in their career. Right. It's, it's basically Rich, Rich Kurt Warner, Rich Gannon. Like it's very short. So to Drew Brees to an extent. Drew, Bre Drew Brees is a great example. Like his first five years when they jettisoned him from the chargers, at that time, I, I don't know how old you were. What year was that? It had to be 2000. 12. Was it you were 12 years old? So it was it was early 2000s. It was Dante Culpepper or Drew Brees. And I was at 1000% in the Culpepper camp. I was like, do not get whatever the Bills got to do. Don't go after Drew Brees. They didn't get either of them. But Drew Brees ended up being the freaking, I mean, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Right. I feel like so. he's one of the most underrated first ballot Hall of Famers where I feel like he has all these stat records to where it always just gets overlooked because he only has the one Super Bowl. Yeah, but I, I I value things differently, uh, even as Patriot fans would, because you guys have six championships with with Tom Brady. I don't value Super Bowls. To me, Peyton Manning is still the greatest quarterback to ever play. Um, and it's a derivative off of it's a derivative off of. Ted Marcher Broda, who was his first head coach, which is a derivative off of Jim Kelly, who was the first quarterback ever to basically call all of his own plays from scrimmage. They tried it with Dan Marino. They tried it with tons of quarterbacks before that. And Jim was the only guy that ever was able to go to the, walk to the line of scrimmage, call his play, and run it. And Peyton, from because of Ted Marcher Broda, who was his head coach when he was a rookie, basically developed him kind of in that same vein. I, championships to me don't mean as much. Like, yeah, I mean, it's, I we're, mean, the, every, we're far everyone removed puts from, it on the pedestal. Yeah, we're far removed from the Johnny Unitas in the world, who all he did was win, right? Johnny yeah. Unitas was a completely different animal, and I'm not old enough to remember Johnny Unitas playing. I just know stories about him, but I don't necessarily believe that. Like, for God's sakes, Mark Rippon has a Super Bowl championship. Jeff Hostetler has a Super Bowl championship. Doug Trent Williams, Dilfer. Uh, Trent Dilfer has a Super Bowl championship. Brad Johnson, like, Brad Johnson has a Super Bowl championship. What are we talking about right now? Like. Joe Flacco, there, Nick Foles. Right. I mean, the, yeah, that list is long and distinguished too, right, as far as that goes. So I, I don't know that John Elway had two after Jim Kelly retired because he couldn't get past Jim Kelly. Dan Marino went to one Super Bowl because he couldn't get past Jim Kelly. Like, and Jim Kelly has no championships, right? So it's just – anyway, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Um, the only thing I'll say to end this, just with the whole because you bring up Jim Kelly, is now I get to watch his nephew Chad hopefully lead. Yeah, yeah. Because yep. north of the border, Toronto, yep. who the Argos, cover, the Argos, who I get to cover. Um, I'm good friends with Ben Holmes. Very good friends with Ben Holmes. Did they release him because of his injury, or did they release him because of something else? I know he was the backup to Chad, but uh, it was pretty much uh, it was pretty much just they wanted to bring in their own guys. Like I, I got gotcha. there after the Ben gotcha. Holmes stuff, but basically all the two new quarterbacks this year. Who are behind yeah. Chad? There, Cameron Dukes, and there's Brian Scott. It's just gotcha. basically bringing in, bring just basically the coach Ryan did when he wanted to bring in his own personnel. But basically, Chad takes a lot of, from his game of what his uncle did during his game. So Chad's oh, yeah. a very fun quarterback to watch play. That was a big problem for him as a college player, and then as he tried to get into the pros because he thought he was Jim, and it's like, yeah, you're not Jim. <laughs> but they, as he's maturing, as he's growing older, he might find a Doug Flutie route. Another one of those guys that did not succeed early in the NFL that came out late in the NFL and actually had some success, right? So so we'll see what happens. But I he's 30 now, so I think unless 
he gets a chance in a few years because he just did sign a contract extension. We'll see. But so he's done. He's done. He's done showing up in people's living rooms in the middle of the night in houses that he doesn't own. Unless Vaughn Miller has another Halloween party <laughs> next week that I don't know about. Yes. I only say that because look, the two of them are ninety minutes away now. Um, this has been an amazing ADD conversation, by the way. I love this conversation. We should do always. this weekly. Oh, yes. We, we love it. We love it. You're always welcome back to do this. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. There's um, no way that all of your conversations go like this because you and I are vibing on the ADD oh. stuff here. So Yeah, you know, no, no. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. It. It's it's all like, I, like I, I try to keep like an order, but then if it goes off the rails, I just say fuck it and I let it go off the rails. Um <laughs> But anyway, Chicago Vegas, which that whole conversation is much more interesting. This game is going to be. I'm going to say this right now, Vegas. I, I there's just there's no way I like. Sh- I don't know. Chicago's I'm just. Take, I'm not taking Chicago ever. No. So a, even a, even Tremaine Edmonds looks bad in Chicago, right? Yeah. So I yeah, there's nothing about Chicago that. Yes, Vegas. I mean, as much as I mean, when you when you look at the weapons and the way they stand up, when you look at the coaching, I mean, Matt Eberflus was great in indianapolis as a defensive coordinator but i don't know that he's a head coach no they literally fired matt and ryan to hire a matt and ryan (laughs) that's a great take you should tweet that oh i will i will it's like my uh the one take i have with you where i believe john elway hires mediocre quarterbacks and no one ever breaks his records in uh that might be true that john elway should be on on the way out as well if we're talking hot seats with with like upper echelon staff john elway should be gone like because that's Sean Payton, how the hell do you come out and and talk about the, the the former head coach the way that you do as Sean Payton, and then you lose your ass to said offensive coordinator, former head coach? Like wow, yeah, that was that was just it was wacky. Um, New York and Washington. Um, I'm gonna say this right now: if Tyrod Taylor's playing, I like the Giants, but if Daniel Jones is playing, I like the Commanders. Did you not watch that football game? I did. Everything, every, everything, every Buffalo is a, is an interesting city. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm not going to get into the background of the city and the way that I grew up as a son of Buffalo and a Buffalo kid. Um, And my misunderstandings based on the, the family that I was raised in, which was not racist at all. Like my family was not racist at all. So as an adult, when I hear conversations about how Buffalo is incredibly racist and it's it's the, one of the most segregated cities in the country, it bothers me because I didn't grow up racist. Like, I didn't no. grow up that way. Like, I, I have no recollection or memory. There are people that believe, even Bill's Mafia, that we jettisoned Tyrod Taylor because the ownership was racist and drafted Josh Allen. Meanwhile, we had three black quarterbacks on our staff or on, on our team. E.J. Manuel. Time. E.J. Manuel, Tyrod Taylor, and uh, la, 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 uh, Cardell Jones from Ohio State. Yeah, three, three, three. Buffalo also is the very first NFL franchise to have basically rostered a black quarterback in the AFL at that time, but mm-hmm. professional football in Rich Stadium. Know it. <clears throat> it, right, as, as as we know it. Um, where the hell was I going with all this? Um, so, I mean, for all for all intents and purposes, you know, when you're talking about Tyrod Taylor. And, yep. and who he is and what we watched in that football game. We saw everything in the Bills-Giants game, why the Bills let him go, aside from losing a step with his legs. Yeah. If Tyrod Taylor was the Tyrod Taylor from seven years ago, six years ago when he was a Buffalo Bill, and he was basically running like Michael Vick, running like Lamar Jackson, running like Josh Allen, they beat the Buffalo Bills last week, Sunday night. And have better clock management. And have better clock management. The fact that he has lost that step... I don't know what it is about Tyra Taylor that you saw that makes you think that he's better than Sam Howell. The, the commanders win that football game 15 out of 14 or 15 out of 16 times, like 19 out of 20 times. Like there's there, like Terry McLaurin is on that football team. Chase Young is on that football team. The, the commander's defense is good. Like there's no, like there's no way the giants win that football game. Well, I, 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 I just say that partisanly just because I feel like a lot of people are going to lean the giant way just because they're like, oh, they almost beat Buffalo. If it like, you know, I know obviously there was the whole call or whatever. And then there was like some of the other stuff. But look, New York is just I you know what? I'm going to change my pick because New York's just a legitimately bad football team. <laughs> you, you convinced me. New York's a bad football team. They are in their throwbacks once again. But you know what? The commanders got a good win last week. I feel like I don't know what to think of the commanders. I know you saw them in person, but they're. 
the commanders are another like roller coaster team where it's like one week they could be good and then one week they could be bad. It's just depending That's based on, on the teams they play. The commanders, yeah. the commanders walk came in. The commanders invited into their stadium a team that was better than them. Right. I mean, that's what that's basically what happened. The Bills were like, we're better than you. And which is what the Bills did not do against the Jaguars. And they basically did not do against the Giants outside of the Giants just playing outside of their mind. That who was the, the linebacker for the Giants that just lost his mind? Like Michael McFadden? The, no, the other one. Ok- Okiki something. Oh, Bobby Okereke. <laughs> Okereke, right. That dude just played out of his mind. He was in every lane, every passing lane. He was in every play. Like he had the game of his life in that football game. But that's not something he's going to have every single week. There's just no. an aspect of, like, the commanders met the Bills when the Bills were like, uh, we're a lot better than you. And the commanders were like, I don't think so. Like, that was a fun <laughs> game for a lot of reasons, and I could we could probably do a show on that. Even to the point of, like, London Fletcher does this thing, like, on the screens to pump the crowd up. And I'm, like, talking to the, to the security guard that's on the field because I was row one. It was really hilarious. And I was, like, former Buffalo Bill, London Fletcher. And then on the field, they, did, they, they do the legends of the game thing that the Bills do, and I'm sure the Patriots do as well, where they bring out a former yeah. player. And they bring out Lorenzo Alexander. And I'm, like, former Buffalo Bill. <laughs> Lorenzo <laughs> Alexander. Like, like all everything around the, that, they did, that they did was about the Bills. But anyways, it, so I digress. But, um, but yeah, I, I, there's just – there's no way – I guess it comes down to what do you think about Sam Howell? To me, Sam Howell, while he's not Brock Purdy, Sam Howell can play football. That dude, yeah, like is a is a professional NFL quarterback, right? He's not a he's not Garoppolo. He's not no. a pretender. He's a court. He's an NFL quarterback. Yeah, I, I I like that. I, I I feel like he's like Trevor Lawrence in the sense of he could be Washington's guy, but I don't think he'll ever be like. The, the like he'll never be an elite guy he'll be a guy that like right. washington can depend on that's fair yeah. i would agree with that um and then tampa bay versus atlanta atlanta is one of the most puzzle like when i say roller coaster or puzzling teams it's the atlanta falcons yes 100%. like they were talking about drafting brock bowers next year which i'm just like no 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 do not waste another tight end's potential i also think too that's just overhyped because we all know that like unless your name is Sam Laporta, rookie tight ends are like, they need time. They need time to develop like Dalton oh, the, Kincaid. The stats, so- the stats say that, but is Dalton Kincaid being misused is the question. But yes, to your point, the, the yeah. stats prove what you just said. Exactly. And then with this game, when I look at Tampa, when I look at Atlanta, okay, I just, when it, it comes down to it, the spread is, I think, plus two and a half for Tampa. We'll, we'll wait for the ticker to go back. But when it comes down to quarterback, which quarterback do I trust more? Baker Mayfield. Really? Oh, I don't trust him. De- De- oh, I mean, Atlanta. I thought Atlanta was going to win last week against Washington, and I was wrong on that. So maybe it's a bit. But, but Atlanta doesn't give Big John. Rod- I mean, did anybody do it better than freaking Annie Agar? Like, when she's talking about, like, yeah. why did you not give them the give them the Big the football? Like, why are you not throwing the football to Kyle Pitts? Like, what is going on right now? Like, why are you getting rid of Calvin Ridley? Like, yeah. what the hell is happening in Atlanta? It's. <laughs> Atlanta, too, also has one of the most puzzling coaches. Arthur Smith is such a weird guy. I feel like it's like the same thing as Eberflu, but it's like... Imagine any quarterback with Bijan Robinson, Kyle Pitts, and Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley is a freaking stud. Put Kirk Kirk back in there. Oh, my God. Put Kirk back in there. They're winning winning 11 games. They also have a very good defense, and their offensive line is... Their offensive line is not bad. It's just, unfortunately, you have a quarterback at Desmond Ritter who... One week he can be good, and the next week he's throwing multiple interceptions. It's just yeah. he's such a Jack, he's he's a Jekyll and Hyde quarterback. So good, that's so, so yes. well said. That's so well said. And then, <laughs> actually, the next game is Baltimore and Detroit. I look at Ball Detroit being an underdog, and like I was always a critic of Detroit in the off season, not for the sense I didn't like them, but in the sense that I thought because you know how every year there's always a team that the media overhypes to the moon and oh, then yeah. it, they just crashed it was the bills burn. last year it was the bills last year like yeah. yeah like you know how bills like everyone thought they're going to arizona like and von miller our- got and then von miller got hurt and it was it all it was all downhill from there and then like demar hamlin died on the football field it's like yep <laughs> I, I i on that note i still say that that patriot game not was like your super bowl but was just the after that it was kind of like we'll see what happens but the guys i think were just mentally drained after that point where it was just Physically, like more or less, but that's—I think that's another topic for another day. That's just something yeah, that I think happened. I, I have my own feelings about that Cincinnati football game, but yeah, go ahead. Which I know two weeks from now, that story is going to be 
that's going to get brought up a lot. That the whole story, because obviously you guys play the Bengals on Sunday Night Football in, in a few Cincinnati. Weeks. Yes, so I think, I, think, I think that Cincinnati playoff game was more about the fact that we had the exact same freaking game plan that Cincinnati anticipated the first time, and we went into the second game with the same plan, and they were like, uh, "You're going to really do the same things because we were, uh, what? Uh, okay." Mm-hmm. And then, so, so yeah, that's that was my so. But back to the Detroit thing, which I have a story yeah. for you about that playoff game in a sec. But um, with Detroit, I just had that worry about them that mm-hmm. it's just this like, you know. Like, you haven't done anything yet, but so far, more than having, like, look, you have a great offensive coordinator in Detroit. You have a great defensive coordinator in Eric Glenn. Mm-hmm. Dan Campbell's built a culture there to where he's gotten his guys to buy in. It's the opposite yep. of, like, the Patriot Way thing we are talking about earlier, where Dan Campbell just says, hey, I want guys who are going to play hard for me. I want, like, the literal kneecap biters of the NFL. Like, yep. he brought yep. in some guys, like, yep. uh, who was the guy? <laughs> it was like, no, Taylor Decker. He gave him a game ball after the win against Carolina, and he's just ecstatic because he's like, we're playing winning football. When I got here, this was shit. So with Detroit, there's a buy-in. And I'm going to say this right now. Baltimore is another team. I feel like they're giving them the minus three because I feel like they're at home. And for Detroit, this is another test. But so far in Detroit's tests, they went into Kansas City and beat Kansas City. People could say what they want. You still went to Arrowhead and got a dub, something that Josh Allen, yeah. I think, is still looking to do in his career. Oh, wait, no, Josh no. Allen won, in, he won last year there. My bad. We won the last two years there. We just can't win in the playoffs there. That, yes, twenty. Yes, and then December tenth this year, you guys are back there. The year before it was the Dawson Knox deep pass, where it was the rain delay game where the Bills have throttled them. We beat them like twenty five points. Yes, week five. I remember that because it was delayed for a while. And what did yeah. I do in my spare time that day? I was reading Kirk Herbstreit's book while you guys are in rain delay. <laughs> great, great read by the way. Um, so with Detroit this week, I feel like it's just because of the injuries, but at the same time too, when it comes down to which football team do I trust more, it's I'm gonna say this, it's. I know Baltimore is a good team. But I trust Detroit more than I trust Baltimore. I uh, am not a huge fan of John Harbaugh. Is that is that a hot take? Um, I don't agreed, a hundred percent. I mean, there's just an aspect of uh, it, 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 this is where the fandom comes into play. For me, mm-hmm. Detroit is a team that I want to root for, whether it's Dan Campbell or just the upstartness or just who they've been for so long. You just want to root for what they are and what they're doing as long as they're not playing my football team. So do I want to see them beat an AFC team that's a potential contender? Yes. I couldn't agree with you more. Like Detroit's, it's like I have the same view on the Lions where it's more how I view the Buffalo Sabres. It's the lovable loser that when they're finally good, you have an appreciation for and you know right. that. Like how are you guys? Right. You guys are good, and there are so many people that are outside. Obviously, not me for obvious reasons, but there's like I have a respect and an admiration for Mafia because of what you guys had to put up with all the crap for years. But then now it's finally mm-hmm. we're we're on top, and why there's people that have bought into Bill, who like rooting for the Bills because it's this yeah. good story. Hundred percent. You're starting to see that a lot with Detroit, like you and I, where it's like, hey, every four years when we play, I'm not gonna cheer for you, but for now, I want you to do good. Yeah, f some shit up. For sure. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. It's just going to be interesting with them with Detroit if they're like once I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to Google on the fly, but like once uh, once Johnson, the offensive coordinator, and then once uh, Aaron Glenn get head coaching gigs elsewhere because I think it's not a matter of if, but it's a yeah, matter it's of fun. it's a when matter. Yeah, yeah. That's when I'm going to be like, okay, what can Dan Campbell do? Yep, it, that's a big piece of it. So yeah, you will see. And also, too, it's so great to see uh, David Montgomery in a uh, system that's doing well. And it is Ben Johnson. My bad. Brian Johnson is in Philly. So Ben Johnson, because I, I feel like Ben Johnson, next Chicago Bears head coach. Um, I, would not have, I would not have corrected you, just so you know. So Appreciate it. Uh, Seattle, Arizona. I'm just going to say Seattle. I think Arizona, it's just. I would not have corrected you, corrected you because I didn't know. Not Ooh. because I didn't. Not because I'm polite, because I didn't know. So, yeah, there you go. Well, now we know it's Ben. <laughs> Brian's in Brian's in it's Philly. Official. Yes. It's official. It's official. Ben Johnson, <laughs> offensive coordinator of the Lions. Uh, Seattle versus Arizona. I'm just going to say, Miley, I, I want to say Arizona will cover this game, but at the same time, too, I said that last week and LA blew their doors off. So I'm going to go. It was awful. Yeah. Like, that's it. It's, yeah. This is Seattle. Yeah. It's, it's Seattle all the way. Um, next game on the docket. This is an interesting one Rams and Steelers. SoFi is going to be Pittsburgh West Coast. 
this well Sunday. the rams don't have a home game right there's no such nope. thing as a rams home game um there's nothing about the rams that i like uh, as far i mean nakua right and the who's the running back that they got there he's on my fantasy teams at williams is that right i think he's hurt now though kyron williams oh is he gotcha um yeah but uh th- this to me shit who knows right i mean the steelers are a jekyll and hyde team it, it, it yeah i'll let you talk about it <laughs> As much as I want to pick a team, I'm like, I'm not so sure. I don't I don't know. I, I feel like I got a good take from this game. Give me the Rams to win, but give me the Steelers on the points. I vibe with that. You know? Yeah. Like close game, but when because when it comes down to it, I'm gonna take Matt. Even though Matt Stafford hasn't been the Matt Stafford of old, I'm still gonna trust him more than I trust two gloves, small hands. Yeah, I agree. I would, I would agree with that. That, that's that's just the only take I have about that, that this game as I wait for the ticker to come by for our, the next one, which is a stinker, which is Denver versus Green Bay. And I'm going to go Green Bay because the Denver Broncos are awful. Yeah, they're a train wreck. They uh, they need a new head coach. They need Nathaniel Hackett back. That's a joke. They do not need, <laughs> they do not need Nathaniel Hackett back. I also have a new take on this apart from the mediocre quarterback thing. That organization sold their souls to get Peyton Manning in the Super Bowl, and now they're doomed for like 20 years of eternal purgatory. Yeah, but it's not because of the Peyton Manning thing. They got the Super Bowl. It's because they tried to duplicate it. They tried to do it again. Hey, we that worked the last time. Let's let's try it again. And the, like they went and got not Peyton Manning, right? Yeah. I mean, it's – and they don't have Vaughn Miller on their defense right so there's an aspect it's just yeah what a freaking train wreck john that john always should not be in uh executive leadership of that football team after this year that defense was won by a super that the, the super bowl was won by a defense excuse me not the offense that year vaughn miller team. said it today in his press conference he's like we went and got peyton manning who was basically on fumes in the last moments of his career <laughs> right we won a super bowl it's like wow yeah yeah <laughs> and then kansas city los angeles chargers I the question it. you want to ask yourself right now is how many calls are the Kansas City Chiefs going to get to win the football game? And what will the points be determined after that point? How many players can take their helmets off on the field and not get a penalty yet get fined? It's it's just so annoying because... Like, because it's just like the Patriots for 20 years? Is that why it's annoying? It's not annoying for that sense. It's don't, more, it, don't even try oh. it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The Bill Belichick and, and Tom Brady Patriots got that same benefit of the doubt for 20 effing years. I was going to say picking them as a spread team, which is effing annoying. But, okay, we can go that route too. Um, because last week, I think, hey, Denver's going to keep it close. Because why? That's what's going to happen. What do you do? Yeah. Kick a field Inter-division. goal. Interdivision, yeah. Yeah, it, it's interdivision and all that stuff. Um, which with this game, I don't know what to think. It's just it's hard to pick against Kansas City, but at the same time, too, LA is LA is another Jekyll and Hyde team. Team, they're so weird. We don't know if they're fans or plants or AI robots anymore. <laughs> which I think that was a legit fan. I know there's a photos she's of her. In don't, Cal- believe, don't believe the Hamas hype. No, she's a legit fan. Yeah. <laughs> like I. I, I just find it weird how it's just like this more or less. The only thing I found was a red flag was the fact that she was on Pat McAfee on ESPN the day after the game was on Monday Night Football on ESPN slash ABC. That's the only thing I found weird about the whole ordeal. But something's going to happen it, in this game where it came I, out that her and her husband are both season ticket holders for the Chargers and have been for yes. like 15 or 20 years. But yeah. She, yeah. She's not a Viking fan. That was a different Asian woman. You racist. Yes. Not yes. you racist. Not you racist, but whoever mm-hmm. racist is thinking about it. Things that <laughs> Which I'm an Irish guy, and all Irish guys look alike, so I can say that. So <laughs> <It's> Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, besides voice and face, I feel like I should just call it uh, just all Irish. I, I'm just going to stick the voice and face for the title of the show. Um, <laughs> but back to the... <sighs> Full circle, right there. Yes. You just said it. But it's yeah, no. Uh, this game is probably going to be like the Viking game from two weeks ago, where it's just... You know, something happens where Kansas City gets it, and then the next day everyone's blabbering on about it. And I know Florio is probably going to have some like interesting take on his show about the whole ordeal. You might be right. I'm, yes. I'm done with that. Yeah. And then the most intriguing game of the week: Sunday Night Football, Philadelphia, Miami. I'm going to say this right now. This is a must-win for both teams in the sense that both teams not only not not saying they don't need to win. Both are five and one. Both do not have a signature win on the year because look at who they've beaten. For sure. New England, Minnesota with a backdoor cover. New England 
which which was a closer game than it should have been. Denver. I'm a, I'm, I was I was doing Philly first. Uh, so and then you, and then Minnesota with a backdoor cover. Mm-hmm. You beat the box, but kind of meh. Commanders. You go to overtime with. You beat the Rams, but then you go to MetLife and you lose to the Jets mm-hmm. and Zach Wilson. Mm-hmm. And then Miami, same thing too. They beat New England. They beat LA. Put seventy up on Denver. Week four, supposed to be this new Dolphins team. What happens? <laughs> you guys put up forty-eight on them. They score <laughs> twenty that week. Yeah. And then they go out there. And and it, was, it wasn't that close. <laughs> no, no, it was not. That was, yeah. and I'll still say this too. I was not, I was, I was annoyed when Stefan Diggs got fined. I love the beer celebration with the Miller highlights. Of course. You um, it would have been more fit. I said this though, for Buffalo's sake, it would have been fitting if those were two cans of bat blue. I am Wait, sorry. The same, the same Stefan Diggs who that wants out of Buffalo. Yeah. The same, the same Stefan Diggs. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying it would have been, that celebration would have been like a 10, like a hundred out of 10. If it was like cans of blue or blue light, you Agreed. know? Agree. Like the true like Buffalonian beer. Everybody in Buffalo agrees with that too, just so you know. Yes. So, yeah. And then obviously they beat the Giants and the Panthers. So for both teams, like whoever gets to win here, it's going to be, I'm going to say this, whoever gets to win here, it's going to be that, hey, this team can beat anyone. Not beat anyone, mm-hmm. but this team can hang with anyone. Because I still mm-hmm. have this take with Miami where they're, they're fake good. I think them and Dallas are in the same category where – they're gonna they're gonna beat the teams that they're supposed to beat, but when it comes time to hang with the big boys, I don't think they're gonna do it. I think Philly is off. I, there's something going on there that's not right. Super Bowl um, hangover. I think, I think Philly is the better team, but something's mm-hmm. not right. Something's off. And the Dolphins, I think, are a good football team. I think that you know, it's it's hard to argue as much as I want to make fun of the Dolphins. Uh, as, and you get it because you're a Patriots fan. Like there's there's something about that team. Now I'm not saying that the Bills can't shut them down, but they just seem to be there. Something seems to be right. Mike McDaniel. Yeah. I mean, like like Blake Ferg. I'm I'm friends with Reed Ferguson, the Bills long snapper, and his brother's Blake Ferguson, who's the long snapper for the Dolphins. And he tweeted today, like the Mike McDaniel mic'd up segment. He retweeted that and reposted. I would die for this man. Like. There's something good happening in Miami. I hate it, but there's something good happening in Miami. Basically, with the coaching, with everything there, it's kind of like how Dan Campbell's built a culture in Detroit. I'll say this right now. D'Amico Ryans is doing it in Houston. We're yeah. seeing it happen uh, there. Yeah, I would agree. Like They're like a baby Lions where I feel like in like two to three years, they'll start to be making real yeah. noise. Yeah, for um, sure. And then with Miami, it's just, look, you got all these pieces here. Um, that game two weeks in Germany. I can't, like, I can't believe the German fans are getting Kansas City-Miami. That is insane. That, like... That right there. But no, for, with Miami, though, because I'm going to say this. Because, like, if Miami doesn't win this game or if Miami loses this game big, like what happened in Buffalo a few weeks ago, it's going to be my, look at who Miami's beaten. I know there was a Simpsons photo that Greg tweeted the other day of Homer Simpson where it's, like, 5-1. and one, But then on the back, it's, like, winning record of, like, one uh, 172. Right. right so right. I think for everything that's going on there, I know I said it's a must win for both. It's a must win for both teams. I think that Miami needs to win more. But I'm going to say this: after a bad loss last week, and the fact that the Kelly Greens are coming back, and it's Sunday night in Philly with right. the Citizens Bank Park rocking down the street as well. I have yeah. the Eagles here. I think Philadelphia wins this. I would love to see Philadelphia win for obvious reasons. I think the Miami needs it more because of who's breathing down their necks, the Buffalo yeah. Bills. I'm not sure that the Eagles need it as much as the Bills do, but yeah. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. I think the, the Dolphins need to win more, but I think the Eagles are going to get the win. I like that. I'm on yeah. I'm on board. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm on board. Yeah, because like I said, <laughs> Sunday Night Football and the Kelly Green uniforms are back for the Eagles. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's and, then mon- and then Monday Night Football, we wrap up San Francisco versus Minnesota. I want to say San Francisco, but I feel like this game may be a San Francisco, but a little bit closer just because Minnesota is like a sneakingly always finds a way to cover. Yeah. And because both both teams too last week, I know Minnesota won, but like I went back and watched some of the highlights. Minnesota looked terrible last week against Chicago. But they do that. That's who they are. They've done that for yeah. the last several years. So they're, yeah. they're, they're a Jekyll and Hyde team. Yeah. It's just last year, everything kind of went their way and then did all that stuff, which. Yeah. And they're not going to have Justin Jefferson, so. No, oh, that's another take that's starting to appear as well is will he be a Viking long term? Because I think there's a chance that they kind of burn it to the ground after the season if they don't make the playoffs. They did it with Diggs. 
That well, was they, they tried to blame Diggs, but yeah, they did it with Diggs. But Diggs was also Diggs had injury history in Minnesota, which he has not had in Buffalo at all, which is wild to me. So I feel like everyone in Buffalo has been relatively healthy, but the defensive side of the ball, obviously, you guys last year's Miller. Well, this year uh, is week four last year, Josh Allen hurt his elbow pretty severely yeah. like like josh allen got a lot of shit last year for playing football in the middle of the season not well and people failed to realize that he had a brace under that white sleeve like people it's like I, like the amount of times i blew the picture up i was like he's wearing a brace on his freaking throwing arm like do you not see this it's definitely not the injury it's like he's injured the dude should not be playing brock purdy got yeah. shut down and had surgery for the same injury so yeah sorry. shohei otani is not pitching anymore because of the same injury even in right. different sports but both right. very arm strength a huge part of it um with the game sunday did you like josh allen getting into that little skirmish after- oh, i love it there there so there, there's a heart there's a there's a very weird after the jets game you know josh allen got impatient which is what the jets do to josh allen they put him in a situation where he's like i gotta get it all right now and he did it three times through three interceptions and you know i on my show i said that you know maybe letting josh allen be josh allen is not the best thing in the world you know maybe you can have a guy that can be the best quarterback in the league at the same time being one of the worst quarterbacks in the league and now we're finding a situation where they're asking him to be a game manager and be very reserved and not run the football and not be josh allen and it's very like what vanilla and it's like what's happening right now like the, like i just got off a show with with jay spence the king and and we were talking about this very thing why can't it be that we're going to go into this football game josh allen with you managing the game we're going to have you as a game manager because you're you can be accurate you can make all the throws take what the defense gives you do all the things you need to do and when when we need you to go in there and f shit up we'll just flip the switch and let you f shit up like why why does it have to be one or the other why can't it be it doesn't have to be f shit up all the time because when you do that you get out of control and it can't be game manage all the time because when you do that you basically lose all your passion for the game which he said in this presser today i need to be more passionate i need to be more demonstrative i need to like the guys need to know that i'm having fun too why can't it be both why does it have to be one or the other but it's yeah so i don't i don't know that i answered your question no, 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 you, 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 you did. Where you like, you want to see the passion there? I just look at it from the sense of like him being hurt, where it's just like because if something bad were to happen there, then it, it's kind of viewed as like, oh, Josh Allen should be doing this. Josh Allen's now this. It's just, it's just like I feel like it's all the the roads there are to be gone. I still feel like the weirdest thing from Sunday's game was the fact that the ambulance has Hamlin's number and name on it. I, that was strange. That, that was I still. Really strange. I, like, like I like, so I've been to Buffalo and I saw the beautiful mural in Larkinville and right near Bar Bill, there's Hamlin, I believe Hamlin Avenue, where there's a little picture of him on top. Like, I like that. Yep. I found the ambulance thing very weird. I found it just like it was a little strange. Yeah. I just, it's especially if you're a conspiracy theorist and the Illuminati, Illuminati stuff. But yeah, but it was a little strange. Yeah, but. yeah exactly. <laughs> like, me and my, me and my one buddy like to joke that, like, because it's, it was all like all like every week up until week four, it was always always inactive. And my buddy and I would message each other being like, Oh, the clone's not ready, just as like in a joking sense, obviously. Yeah, yeah, but, for um, sure, for sure. but yeah, but the, but no, it's just it's great to see him playing football again. And then with your team, um, is it so there's a phrase you coined. Do you know the phrase? You probably know the phrase. Stats only matter until they don't. Oh no, wildest dreams land. Oh, wildest dreams, and yeah, the, the stats only matter until they don't. Is another Joe Millerism. So, oh, I like that. Um, but with the wildest dreams, well, think like, about it. Break it down. Yeah. There's an aspect of like, oh my god, all yeah. these stats and blah 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 blah. It's like that stat doesn't doesn't mean anything. Like yeah, and people no. just like lean on these stats. So Josh Allen in the Jaguars game in England basically didn't do shit until the last five minutes of the game, and then he threw for 200 yards and two touchdowns, and people walked away being like. Josh Allen threw for 360 yards and 83% completion percentage and had three touchdowns in this football game. It's like, yeah, in the last four minutes, like when it didn't matter anymore. So stats don't, stats only matter until they don't. But yeah, yeah that, that's why I feel like a lot of people are putting him in the MVP conversation right now. Yeah. My thing with Wildest Dreamsland, though, is just with Buffalo this year, obviously last year was a bit humbling just for the whole like being brought back to earth where it's like, hey, we're Super Bowl favorites, but then everything kind of comes down. Um, with this year, is it viewed as Super Bowl or bust, or is it just no. try to get to the AFC Championship game and see what happens? No, obviously you want to get past the divisional round, right? Things things are different this year, um, mainly because of the roster. It was Super Bowl or bust last year because of Von Miller. I mean, yeah. Von Miller chose Buffalo. 
Yeah. I'm going to say that again. Von Miller chose Buffalo. And the reason Von Miller chose Buffalo is because of Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and primarily J- Josh Allen. Josh Allen or, or, or Von Miller wasn't even on our radar. It was Chandler Jones. It was Daniil Hunter. Are we going to trade for Daniil Hunter? Um, blah, 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 blah. And then it comes across the ticker that the Buffalo Bills are signing Von Miller. And you're like, what? Like, and it was two what's. It was like, first of all, Von Miller wants to play in Buffalo. And then it was like six years for $120 million for a 30, what was he, 34, 35 year old defensive end at that point in time. Um, but the wildest dreams land piece last year was different than this year. But wildest dreams land effectively is, is 100% about, it's about you as a Patriots fan. It's about mm-hmm. 20 years of listening to Patriots fans who were insufferable, um, who don't even know who Steve Grogan and Tony Eason were or are, if they're still oh, alive. I do. Or, or like uh, weren't Patriots fans before Tom Brady's fifth year in the NFL or fourth year in the NFL. Like, oh, these guys are good. They've won two Super Bowls already. Maybe I'll be a fan of the Patriots. Like, like there's an aspect of like all of the shit that they piled on top of Bills fans. And it was, you will never, you will never. You'll never have a franchise quarterback. You'll never be win the AFC East. You'll never be what you were. You'll never win the Super Bowl. Wildest Dreams Land is basically not in your wildest dreams. Will you ever see, hear, think, believe, get to watch the stuff that we've watched? And now we have a quarterback that basically is ridiculous. Encapsulates all that. Yeah, and it's Wildest Dreams Land. Like, literally, we're living in Wildest Dreams Land when they let Josh be Josh. So yes. That's right. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I ever told you this, but my story with Pat's fans a little different, not different from everyone else. Obviously I know I've gotten to know my history and everything like that. And like yeah. how look, this, the seventies was like a dark, like this is one of the worst yeah. teams ever. Um, my thing was my first game I actually ever watched with this team was the 2001 AFC championship game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. The one where, yeah, basically, uh, the one where Tom started, hurt his ankle, Mm-hmm. And Drew basically won it for came them. Back in, yeah, came back. Yeah, had to come. That was that was a very very. Uh, that was Tom's first year. That was a very. Uh, what's the word? Uh, no, what's the word? It was very. It was. Uh, there was a lot of stuff going into that game because Bledsoe was ready and he was yes. the starter that season. And they were like, "We're going to start Tom." And everybody was like, "What?" And then Tom sprained his ankle, and then Drew came yeah. in, and then Drew led them to the Super Bowl. And then so, Tom played. Yes, I didn't get my first jersey in 2004, though, after the second Super Bowl, but Mm -hmm. I was 10 at that time. So for me, yeah, I like this. I have two things to say because obviously, like, look, you have so many kids now, like, who are Josh Allen fans because of him being good. You have so many kids that are Patrick Mahomes (laughs) fans. So, like, that was me with Tom. But the one thing I will say, I I completely lost my train of thought for a second there. Wildest Dreams Land. You were talking about Wildest Dreams Land as far as like what Bills fans, do you got it back? Yeah, no, no, no. We'll go back to that. So I basically thought because I what I thought with that was is where it was just more or less you guys were. It was a happy to be here kind of scenario, but for you guys now, it's that you kind of cleared my head on it to where now instead of hey, not that just are we happy to be here, right. it's a sense of just we're the kings, we're all those things that we got clowned on for. We're now, mm-hmm. we're now big brother, which that moniker as much as it sucks to say, got handed over on a cold, snowy night in Buffalo about <laughs> almost two years ago after a 47-17 to 17 drubbing, which, no though, I will say... No punt games. Scored, yeah, no punt games. No, no punt games. Though, although, the, I will say this, though, the only thing I don't like what Bills fans do is when they like to reference that game to us just because, like, the, the ones that view it at, that game is a Super Bowl. It's That's that's the kind of where I want to draw the line at. Well, like, when, you, when you've got when you've got a coach, a head coach as storied as Bill Belichick, and the only mm-hmm. team that has done a no-punt game against him, a, a defensive storied head coach who beat us mm-hmm. in the Super Bowl, in, in Super Bowl 25. Yes. And the only thing that we have against him is the fact that we are the team that, uh, that, that the only team that has done a no-punt game against him, not once, but twice, <laughs> like... There's some laps there that need to be run. So, yeah. Very fair point. And, oh, yes, I have my next thought before we go tonight. And that is, obviously, I like to talk to you about the stadium just because stadiums are something that always intrigue me. Yeah. Um, so, it's like it's a bit of a two-parter. One, is parking been affected at Highmark ever since the construction? And two, is it uh, – because I've heard 
it was like how I told you, I get Buffalo news. And sometimes like when I watch it, they say like, oh, with the game day coming up, like uh, sheriffs are saying certain areas are blocked. So has it changed the game day experience at all with the construction or? So um, I'm old, I'm an old man. I'm 50. And things that bothered me or concerned me now didn't concern me 10 years ago. So during the drought years, we would have sellouts. Like like Bill's Mafia, the selling out our stadium was never a problem. We're, no. we're rabid. We're, we're not the Miami Dolphins, right? So open, opening day, there's not an empty seat in our stadium, unlike in Miami, right? So um, I think it's fair to say that between the two of us. Um, yes. And, and, and I say that all the time, but uh, even on Twitter. But um, even during the drought years when we have sellouts, Back then, I didn't necessarily tailgate because I lived in Columbus, Ohio, and I would drive up on Sunday or on Saturday night, and my dad and I would leave from Hamburg, which is in the South Towns, a suburb next to Orchard Park, and we would basically leave my dad's house at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We would drive down Southwestern or up Southwestern, whatever, and just before Abbott, take a left-hand turn into a side lot, pay our money, whatever, and be you know parked by 12, 20, 12, 25, and then walk in the stadium, watch a football game, yada, yada, go home. Last year, everything changed. So post-COVID, right? So last year, if you were not parked someplace three hours before the game start started, everything was closed. Side lots, stadium lots, everything. So we're, we're talking about a situation where 30,000 people, maybe more, were coming down to the stadium to party for the game beforehand uh, and maybe would leave to go watch the game or would watch the game like on their television and set up in the back of their truck or their car, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. This year, this year, this is where the old man stuff comes in. Across Abbott, across the street from the stadium, which is where the camper lot and a big portion of the parking lot was, is completely it's gone because they're building a new stadium there. It's completely gone. There's a giant hole in the ground, which some dude fell in covered in feces and on like four different drugs, which if you heard that story, home opener weekend. The Bills also bought the mud lot. So the mud lot was a big lot that like a lot of Bills fans parked in. It was a side lot that that's becoming the camper lot or is the camper lot this year. So there's two lots that are completely gone. So I have been very concerned this past weekend for the Giants game in primetime. I got there in a lot at, at like 2.30. It was raining. I did not want to be there that early, but I got there that early. And I literally, because it was raining, took a nap in my truck. I fell asleep for about an hour, had red zone on, <laughs> on my phone, on my speakers, truck run, and just fell asleep. And then about 4 o'clock, walked out. Um, I have not noticed that parking has necessarily been a problem, but I've been there early enough to not necessarily have to deal with it. I can tell you this. The Green Bay Packers game, no, it was not the Green Bay Packers game. It was the crap. I'd have to look at this. There was, there was a late Monday night or Sunday night primetime game where I literally, literally had to park. A, we got there two hours before the game, McKenna and I, my daughter and I got there two, two and a half hours before the game, and everything had been shut down like for six hours because people got there early to party. And we had to park a mile and a half away, like a mile, Jesus mile Christ. and a half away. Like we had to walk forever in the snow, snow suits, snow boots. Like it was in the winter. It was like it was cold outside. Um, so I can only imagine people that are showing up at 1130, noon are like where are we supposed to park and then they're walking a million miles to the stadium so i would i would venture to guess that based on last year it's a problem i have not experienced it yet just because i've been getting there early enough because i'm an old man fair point fair point and then well i feel like it'll be a fun test to see for you guys at that like next thursday just because obviously it is a night game and it is a thursday it's like the one because we only have two one o'clock games left yeah, they're both oh. against us. You're welcome for that. <laughs> How weird is that, though? <laughs> that's, that's the other thing I've learned about Bills fans, too, is that how many of them love the 1 o'clock window? You and Greg both. Are I do like, not. Oh. I do not. I do not. Greg does. I do yes. not. For me, the best Sunday ever is when I get to get home from church and then literally watch football from 1 o'clock until 1130 on Sunday and then get to watch the Bills play on Monday night or – the only that only gets beaten by the Bills winning on Thursday night, and it's already victory Friday, victory Saturday, victory Sunday, and I get to watch football because. But I also love football, much like yes. you. Do. So for people that only want to watch, and not Greg, Greg I know loves football too, but for a lot of people that only watch the Bills, one o'clock is their thing. Whereas for me, it's like if I can get an entire Sunday and I don't have to stress about the Bills, I don't have to worry about putting my notes together because I don't have to do a show on Sunday night. Like I don't have to do a post game show, blah, 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 blah. I don't miss part of the Sunday night football game. To me, that's elite football when the Bills play on Thursday or Monday night. I like that. My personal time preference is 425 just because 
you know, you watch the one o'clock games, you have yep. your game, and then you just bleed right into Sunday night football. The best TV on football, if you have the Red Zone channel, is what uh, Scott Hansen, Scott Hansen, Chris Hansen is, is now calling the witching hour. The last hour, the three o'clock, the four o'clock time on the Red Zone channel. And it it's always been that way. Like I've had Sunday ticket since 2007. And like literally that's my favorite window of television. That last hour of the one o'clock games is amazing on the Red Zone channel. Amazing. Where losses become wins and wins, and wins become, become losses. losses. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Th that's the good TV because like with Sunday night football, for as much as I love playing on Sunday night football, it's just that you're waiting. You're waiting. Mm. You're waiting. And then you have football night in America. And then you got to watch the game. But then with Sunday and Thursday, it's great because, hey, you work your nine to five, five o'clock, you mm. go home. And then, boom, you watch the pregame for a couple hours. And then yep. on your TV is the games, oh. which – I know you guys for I don't know Monday night football, but I know for you guys have Thursday night and Monday night coming up, and then the Patriots have it several later in the them. year. Yeah, yeah, several of them. Yeah, yeah, because you guys. Let's. If I'm looking at your schedule, I know you have Thursday, next, gonna, Thursday next week. Thursday next week. Bucks. Yep. Then Cincinnati. Yeah. Sunday night. Yep. Yep. Then Denver There's Monday night. We have several several four twenty five games. Yeah, we only have two one o'clock games left, and this week is one of them. Yep. Hi, and then I'm gonna make a bold prediction right now. Your game oh, week eighteen is probably going to be Sunday night football. You think they'll flex it? Yeah, I think that, will, that that's a that's a flex candidate. You, yeah, you, it, it, if, if that game matters for the division, you might be right. I think also too, if it matters for seeding as well, if it's oh, uh, awesome. yeah, yep. like it awesome. could be a matter of like not missing the playoffs because I think Buffalo and Miami are both going to make it. It's just a matter of like, hey, if Buffalo wins mm -hmm. this, they may still have a chance at the one seed or if Miami yeah. or, or Miami, just because obviously Miami is the better record right now. But right, right. And the one note I'll end on is just with that, because like how you're saying earlier, this is a must win for Miami, because if you lose this game, you're tied with Buffalo and then that makes Buffalo leapfrog you in the division. So Buffalo right. would go into first place. So right. For Bills Mafia out there, I'm just going to say this right now. You're welcome. For those of you who love the one o'clock window, because you get us in the one o'clock window, so you get to you get two wins at one o'clock, and your two one o'clock games left on the season. So you're very welcome for that. We'll Thank relish you. all our times at one o'clock for the rest of the season. Thank but anyway, you. Joe, this ADD voice and face of Buffalo conversation was a blast. <laughs> Will it be weekly? We don't know, but we'll definitely have to get the man back on soon as. The season wind, not winds down, but the season progresses because, like I said in my intro, we're almost halfway there, and I don't like saying that, but I like saying it. Does that Happens make sense? Fast. Happens fast, for sure. Football season flies by, and I do not like it. Agreed, 100%. With that, it's, on that, we can agree. We agreed on something. Look at that. A Pats fan and a Bills fan agreed upon something. <laughs> but anyway, guys, enjoy week seven of the NFL season. Enjoy all the football that there is to be left because, like we said, We'll snap our uh, – like I'm going to say now, you're going to snap your fingers and all this football Over. will disappear. That's right. Have a good night.